Oh, my Lord. You know, it is Mother's Day coming up, everybody. That's the big day Sunday. All you guys out there, you lazy, you go get that card now because they're running out in the, in the stores. So you got to get your cards. Got to give mom props. And so today on Weldon Week Live, don't forget, like, subscribe. I want to interview um, two mothers, two mothers that I know. And I think, uh, I don't think I know that uh, our moms are our unsung heroes, really. we I think we really um, underestimate the sacrifices that, most of our moms make. I understand there's some bad moms out there, but overwhelmingly, 99.9% of moms are, they're good. And the sacrifices that we forget, and especially if you're not a mom. So I wanted to touch on that today. And I said, wow, this would be a great segment to have. Wait, two moms that I know. And we're going to talk about not only Mother's Day, but what it is to be a mother from start to what we are, where the ladies are now out there. So big shout out to you moms, all the moms out there. We love you. So the two moms I have today, are two friends of mine. Uh, we have Jerry over here and Joanne down here. I feel like I'm in the the, the uh, Brady Bunch uh, window here. I'm looking down. At, okay. So, uh, Jerry and Joanne, how are you guys today? <laughs> Good. Great. Thank you. Thank yes. you for coming on. Thank you for coming on. So, you know, I wanted to, like I said, uh, I want to make this about, uh, you know, you guys, the mothers and our moms. And uh, I said this to you guys off camera. Um, you know, I, as we get older... I think most of us realize this, but maybe not. I would just, it just hit me. I'm like, wow, you know, our, just being a mother, just giving birth, just birth alone is a harrowing experience. I mean, um, the numbers real quick, and I, I'll rattle them off to the viewers. I mean, if, you know, last year alone in America, this is not some third world country in America last year, 1,205 women died just giving birth. So I think we forget, like, our mothers put their lives on the line right out of the gate to give us a life. And by the way, that's a choice. I think we forget. We think, like, it's a foregone conclusion. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, no, I was born. No, 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 no. Your mother made a choice for you to be born. That, that's not that, – that's – when you let that sink in, that's some serious stuff that you ladies, our mothers, you know, and then they put – their lives on the line. It's not getting our nails done. This is a serious thing. That's why you go to a hospital. The other thing I wanted to touch on is that if you make it out of childbirth, last year alone in America, over 60,000 women had very, very serious complications due to birthing. That wasn't death, but very, very serious weeks and months afterwards. So, I mean, that alone, Mother's Day should be huge all the time. And uh, so I wanted to really kind of put that out there that we really forget uh, and, and underestimate the sacrifices our mothers make right from day one to give us a life. So big shout out to you moms out there. All right. So uh, questions for you ladies. Um, I'll start off with uh, Jerry because you're, you're, you're here. Okay. So Jerry, the day that you found out you were pregnant with your firstborn, like what, what is that like for someone who's not a mother, not a woman? Like what was going through your mind? You find out you're pregnant with your firstborn. Take it away, Jerry. You felt what? I was very, very excited and very happy. Um, I, uh, my husband and I were married 15 years before we decided that we wanted children. So when I finally did know that I was pregnant, it was just an overwhelming amount of joy. Okay. So you were like, whoa. And so you, I guess, right. And you had that time period, I guess, for over a little bit over a decade that, right. Mm -hmm. You were, had yes. that time of newlyweds. So this was something that we were probably thinking of and anticipating for a while. Okay. 100%, yes. So Joanne, uh, so you find out day one, boom. Oh my God. It's the, uh, the, whatever the, the pregnancy stick is, is yeah. it blue or dash? Or, like you find out you're pregnant. What goes through your mind that, that second? Um, I thought, well, I was nauseous the whole time. So you knew it. <laughs> I, well, then I made the connection why I was nauseous. Right. And I was like, wow, that, that this is this is it. Like, there's something growing inside me. It was a right. little crazy. Um, I was excited, and I was with my husband five years before we got pregnant, okay. so we had a lot of time together, which I thought was great because I knew once we had a baby, it's more complicated. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I was very excited, but the nausea lasted the whole time, so that was miserable. I and wanted to say, I'm sorry, go ahead. It was just miserable. I almost gave birth at six months because I couldn't hold the baby in. So I got hospitalized. Um, and so my husband is actually, at the time was a, on the mini tour for golf and he was in upstate New York 
And my dad drove me to the hospital and was like, don't tell him. He made the cut. You got to <laughs> finish. And I was like, but the nurse said I might have the baby today. Yeah, yeah. He should be here. Right. You know, so I was right. like waffling. And I'm like, oh, should I? I don't know what to do. And then I was like, well, he's got to come to the birth. <laughs> so oh. I told him. And um, he pulled out of the tournament and they were, they managed to have the baby stay inside me. And my dad was so upset at me. No. Told him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you see, this is what I'm talking about, right? As great as a father can be, or as great as grandpas can be, us men don't understand. Like, this is, this is serious. But look at uh, Joanne. You were throwing up. You were nauseous. By the way, both of you women, any woman who's pregnant, you can't sleep regularly. You have a bowling ball in your stomach. Guys, Walk around with a bowling ball for eight months. See how see how your life is, you know. So this is what I'm saying. Like this sack, and we're not even talking about women putting careers on hold and coming home and cooking and cleaning. Like just every single woman out there. I mean, that is. Um, I forgot about that. The complications before the birth. I mean, geez, you know, like these your boy. Your boys better be vacuuming, cleaning their room every day, Joanne. No, no, you're right. So okay. So now uh, we'll we'll go in reverse. So my next question is. So what did you think, Joanne, being a mother would be like before the reality of it, though, for your first your first point? So I thought about this and I actually never thought about it. I thought like kind of traditionally, like you get married, you have kids. Like, I just thought that was the expectation. So I just just got pregnant. Right. And then, you know, when you have a baby, you're like, oh, no, like then the questions start coming up in each stage of life, like, how would my mom have done it? How am I going to do it? Right. What right. the hell am I doing? I right. don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. Oops, I made a mistake. Yeah. Um, uh, they'll probably go to therapy because yeah. of the things yeah. I didn't do and did do. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but you, know you, you don't know. I didn't right. know. And to your point, though, uh, ladies, and I think even for fathers, but this is a Mother's Day special, not a Father's Day special. But I think that, you know, you got – a mother, parents, mother has the most important job on earth. And right, you're, there's no training. There's no college degree for this. You get more training if you major in accounting, four years of intense training. You know, being a mother, most important thing you can do on earth. And there's, right, like you said, you're winging it. So I often remind myself of that when I'm mad at my own mother. And I say, you know what? My mother's human. Like she, no one gets this college degree in mothering. You know, like you, you can't, yeah, you kind of wing it. And so that makes me more empathetic to my own mother to say, you know what, I, I, I forgive my mom if I was mad at her for this or that. I, I'm no specimen either. I, I didn't get the that handbook for fathering, you know. I mean, so, uh, but Jerry, what about you? So, you, you, what did you think about being a mother prior and now post, you know, your firstborn? So, um, I guess I I had a lot of time to think about it. And um, I knew what kind of a mother I wanted to be or how I wanted to be with them. So I, I guess it was everything I thought it was going to be. It really was. Okay. Um, it was just more difficult for me because I had started a company. I, was, uh, I, I had my own business. I didn't want to give that up. So I didn't want to be a stay-at-home mom. Uh, I integrated my work with my motherhood which was, I think, the most difficult thing to do. Uh, I, I often feel that I should have really just been a stay-at-home mom, but then I don't think I would have accomplished, and I don't believe we would have been in the same place. That We definitely wouldn't be in the same place that we are now. Right. So um, I'm glad that I, I was able to integrate both, with a lot of screaming and yelling. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, you, you, but I did. Yeah, yeah. You touch both of you touch on something. You know, again, and uh, right, putting careers on hold or, or putting interests on hold. Us men don't have to put crap on hold. You know, because we're not breastfeeding. You know what I mean? We're not. You know, I mean, you might yeah. again, as great as the dads could be. You, you're not breastfeeding. You're not. You, yeah, I understand men change diapers, but again, the women have the, uh, you know, the the added yes. uh, weight on them that a man can never have. I mean, you're just talking about it now. Like, what am I going to do in my career? Guy ain't thinking about that. Yeah. You, you, you know, like, and again, not to crap on guys. A lot of great dads out there, no doubt. But we're just not. We're not. Ha we don't have to worry about yeah, my career. You yeah, keep and you, marching you, on, actually, dude. you actually touched upon something on on nursing. You know, I was I didn't put my career on hold. I still did 
whatever I had to do. I right. went to work. I traveled. And right. even you during can't... the time period, yeah. I actually took my breastfeeding pump with me. Right, right. You can't pump tell your field. husband. You can't tell yeah. your husband, hey, can you take the kid and breastfeed him for me real quick? It, you know, right. you moms are doing this. Yeah, yeah. So it was, it was difficult. They but, actually now made this thing called, it's called the mental load, that women take on this huge mental load of organizing, buying more diapers, making sure the, the house has enough toilet paper. So like women have this huge mental load that's kind of invisible and men go to work and they do their job. And then the expectation is like, oh, the mom's supposed to schedule soccer practice and the yeah. mom's supposed to do all these things. And I think it's incredible now, like our kids' generation now see, like especially raising boys, that they're having to be more responsible and take on this mental load. Yeah. Um, but it's it's hard, I think, to change that language because the older generations, like the expect, like they always ask me, like, "How's your boys?" And they ask my husband's, "How's golf?" You know, yeah, so it's yeah. a different conversation always happens that way. Too. Right. Like women are not human beings. You guys are just <laughs> these things, you know. And again, we're, I, human. we're super. super. <laughs> well, you're right. You're not human. We you're, are. You're, you're superhuman. Right. A hundred percent. But I think even the younger, the younger me, I saw moms or women as oh, moms like, yeah, yeah, whatever. You know, but now as I've gotten older and, and you like to think age equates maturity but not for all people but i've i've seen and i and i've been through some stuff and i'm like wow man you know uh yeah mom's really yeah look at this right yeah how, how are your boys but the guys how's your 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 career it's it's um oh it's it's demeaning not overtly it's inadvertently demeaning and they don't mean to be that and none of us mean but yes yeah, so this is again why i wanted to do this show okay so my next question well i guess we'll go this way uh so i guess start with jerry again so um so when you're going into labor, Jerry, the, the, for your, I, I'm, I'm always pre prefacing the firstborn because this is your first experience, right? I mean, if you have two kids, three, yeah. you know, by the whatever, the, other, the well, second or third, yeah. your, your quote unquote experience. But the first one is the, you know, oh boy. So, and we love our second ones just as much as the first ones. Anyway, so, all right. So you, you're going into labor, Jerry. Here it comes. It's starting. Are you afraid? Are you hopeful? Are you yes. just like whatever? Like what what is going through your mind when you're like, okay, this is it? So because I had complications before, um, I had um, I had issues that uh, uh, prevented me from having uh, labor, going through labor. I had placenta previa, which is um, so I, I was basically bedridden for from like month three on. Wow. And so I had to have a uh, planned C-section. So for me, and you know how I am, being in bed was not ideal. So it, I didn't stay in bed. I was still working and I, I was able to work from home. So, I mean, not work from home, but I had a computer more focused on computer and things like that. So I didn't have to really, um, it, I couldn't be bedridden. But um, so I had a planned C-section. So... Uh, it, it was sort of like, you know, okay, I had an amniocentesis like the day before, you know, just to make sure that the baby's lungs were healthy. And then the next morning I was scheduled for my C-section. So when I went in, I was super excited. I, I really was. I was nervous, but I was also a little naive. So I didn't understand my, the extent of my complication before I was pregnant. I had no idea the risk that I had. And I was seeing, you know, uh, risk a high risk doctors is what they call them. And right. so, yeah, but I was still super excited. I was yeah, like, by the way, on and everything. I was ready. For uh, this all sassy. <laughs> by the way, though, when you talked about the amniocentesis, uh, mm -hmm. that's, I believe, a large needle, right? That goes into your belly. I have no idea. I'm pretty I, I sure. No, the reason why I mentioned that is because, no yeah, it I'm, I'm, very, into your belly. I'm very sure there's a large needle and that's also high risk. That that simple little procedure, like oh, yeah, we're just gonna, you're plunging a huge needle into the mother's womb that could hurt that child. Yes, and so right. and that's just for a little test. Listen, I, I have to give a needle just to get my my you know vaccine. And I'm crying. I mean, I, you yeah, trust me. That amyo, uh, you know, yeah. uh, what do you call it? Probing is no joke. Okay, so Jer um, uh, Joanne. So yeah, you, you go into labor, and so what say you? You, you? This is it, the first one. Like, oh my God, here we go. What were you thinking? I think, well, I think being a mom is really tough because you have a thousand opinions, and everyone's like, 
go all natural, don't use medication. I mean, the amount of opinions was that I think was the hardest. And so I went into it being like, oh, I'm not going to, I'm going to do it naturally. I don't know why, like I, I needed to prove to someone that I could not take medication. Unfortunately, um, I had to get an epidural because they gave me Pitocin, which speeds up your labor. But the complication is you can get multiple contractions and no break. So I was getting like, eight contractions, then a break, then six, con like it was probably, it is the worst, most painful feeling I've ever felt in my life. So they had to give me an epidural because I was probably going to pass out. Right. Um, and so once I had the medication, I was like, this is good. I was excited. Um, I pushed 20 minutes and the baby came out and that wow. was it. And it was okay. great. Um, and then the start of like, you know, endless sleepless nights yeah 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 <laughs> well, right that's the other thing and, and you know both of you touched on this the amount of strain stress and really damage to the body when you're giving birth you know again us guys don't realize this i mean your body is changed forever and that's just having a quote-unquote quick birth i mean again a bowling ball is coming out it, it's been in you for eight months seven months whatever and now you're gonna it, it's it really is devastating physiologically to the human body it's 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 damaging you know, they and, say it's like running a marathon without a single ounce of training when you right, go right, right, hundred percent, no <sighs> doubt. You know, so and 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 again, that's just natural birth. But right, you, you know, if you, C section. Listen, I had to have a um, a uh, what you call it. Um, I had a, a small procedure done many years ago for a uh, um, what do they call that um, a hernia, and they went laparoscopy laparoscopic tree in, into me with just three little pokes into my abdomen i thought i died i, I was like i can't do it. like i mean if you saw the scars I and mean, they're, they're one millimeter like this in, in my abdomen area and I, c section is you are gutted from hip to hip are you kidding me so i'm like dude i don't know and my mother got a c section uh, so i'm like you know what god big shout out to you mom. yeah like and, and again natural birth if you don't get a cesarean I don't want to be TMI here, but again, you are pushing a bowling ball through, you know what I'm saying, folks? So it's not exactly like it's a, a, a parking spot that this is going through. I mean, so, you know, so, okay. Joanne, so Joanne was talking about going natural, right? And she thought that, you know, Hey, you had to prove something, right? So the same thing with me, I, after I gave birth, I had a C-section, right? So I was like, no, no, I don't need any medicine. Absolutely not. I want mm -hmm, watch. So I was like, yeah, I don't need anything. Uh, I was in bed. I, I felt like I was okay, right? So they're like, you don't need, because I wanted to breastfeed and I was afraid that the medicine was going to go into the bloodstream. So the next morning, so I had my baby, it was like 9.30 in the morning, no painkiller whatsoever. The next morning you're expected to get up, right? So I got up, <laughs> fainted. Oh, jeez. From the pain, from the pain, I fainted. So, yeah, so I, of course, then I was like, oh, I think I need something. <laughs> right. I mean, and again, gentlemen watching this, sons and daughters watching this, this is just day one. Okay. We're not even in two <laughs> weeks. Of the hours. This is the first day of the war. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And again, I mean, when I'm being facetious and tongue in cheek. I don't mean war, but, but it's a beautiful thing. It's a blessing, no doubt, joy and happiness. But let, let's be honest. I mean, you know, people, we don't want to talk about the, the hard stuff here. And this is why Mother's Day is so important. Okay. My next question, we'll start with Joanne. So now you had the first, and by the way, both of you have two boys. So you're very similar in that respect there. Okay. So your second birth your second you know pregnancy joanne what did what, what were your feelings now okay you're now hey, i'm pregnant again what were your feelings about that were you like more nervous or just hey, i got this like what did you feel on your going into your second birth um i felt really good my kids are five years apart so i was really excited i was excited that my my firstborn would be able to come to the hospital to see the baby after birth like everything seemed great and ironically at the time, the, the hospital was right across the street from the church. That uh, So when I gave birth in the morning, it was Sunday. So I saw everybody going to church, and I thought that was, like, so sweet and oh. so full circle, and it was lovely. It was, like, so much. The second time, sometimes I wish I knew what I knew because the first time was so – even though the second time, I almost passed out wow. because um, I was – 
trying to go to the bathroom and they wouldn't, you know, you have to ring a bell because the first time you go to the bathroom, they want to make sure you're okay. And no one was coming. And I just had given birth and I had to go to the bathroom. So I went and I walked to the bathroom and the nurse saw me and I was literally about to pass out. So she like gave me smelling salts and I was like, Oh my God, I'm awake. Wow. But like, yeah. Wow. Crazy. Okay. And so birth. that's about, <laughs> and Jerry, what about you? Second birth, you thought you felt what? So second birth uh, was worse than the first because, um, yeah, so I was still, I still had the same issue, which usually they say, no, it's, it, you only have it one time, you know, you, you won't have a, a, a placenta previa the second time, but I did. And um, so the second time it was, it was actually the, the, it was, it was more complications because of that issue. And um, I had a scheduled c-section but um i went into i don't know if it was it wasn't really labor i started bleeding basically and that's part of the issue of that placenta previa so uh, i had no idea how how um how the risk that it was i mean i could have actually died i had no idea of this and i mean i laugh now but it wasn't funny um so i um i got myself to the hospital uh by myself because my husband wasn't even there that morning. So I had my sister come over to the house and then I guess my sister had my brother come over to the house because I had still had, and Vincent was four years old at the time, my older one. And so I got myself to the hospital and um, they just basically started monitoring me and, and I had to give birth that day. So I had, I didn't have an emergency C-section, but it was definitely controlled and and I, I really trusted my doctors. Like I was very, 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 and I think that was important because I trusted the high risk doctors that I was under the care of. Right. I really trusted everything that they were doing. Yeah. So. And you almost have no choice, right? Your life now in your child's life. Listen, it's you could say to yourself, I don't care about me, but my child. I mean, that's all not yeah. in your hands anymore. Th right. That's very scary. And, you know, for mm -hmm. and a type A personality like myself, I like to be in control yeah. of everything. If I were a woman, yes. I don't know, I'd lose my mind. By the way, you know, the more I'm hearing both of you speak, I'm like, there should be a Mother's Day parade down Fifth Avenue. Like, honestly, <laughs> like, you know, and I, I mean, really, I mean, it just that the, the, I'm listening to this. I'm like crapping my pants, like in fear of what you're. But this is something that millions of moms go yeah. through every year in America alone, never mind the whole world. And, and can you, it's just, yeah, like. And you know what? We tend to forget. I mean, at least I do. I totally forgot about what I went through until you gave me these questions. I'm like, Oh, right. I forgot about no, honestly, you know, you tend to, you know, sometimes, you know, we're grateful for what we have. And I think that's, that's the nice thing is that when you are given these questions, like, Oh, wow, that was pretty. You know, yeah. I mean, you scary. guys, and, and by the way, it's, it's a choice. You know, I always say, I mean, oh, nobody it, has it to get pregnant. Choice. You moms make a choice and, 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 that's yeah. going into a battle. Really, it is. It's it's not. And that's, again, if everything just goes great, again, right. you were going through something right. that you got to carry this weight around you. You can't sleep right. You can't eat right. Your emotions, your hormones. And that's not even given birth yet. So, okay, my next thing is we'll start with going around this. Jerry, so um, what So, what did you think uh, of your own mother after you became a mother, you know, like, or, or you are now? Like, how do you see your own mom now? But you have been through this. Right. So um, my mom had three of us. You know, they were I was, it was I was the oldest and uh, my brother, uh, my sister's two years younger than I am. And then I have a brother that's six years younger than I am. So I have a, a, a great deal of appreciation and empathy for what, you know, for for who she is. Um, I have a good understanding now of why she did things the way she did. You know, she, a uh, different generation, her upbringing was different. So I guess, um, yeah, I guess I think that I, I just have more of a, a caring and understanding. I think. Right. Is, yeah. Okay. And, and Joanne, what, what say you, how do you see your mother now that you are a mother? Um, so my mom is an immigrant twice over. So she came she escaped from North Korea, ended up in South Korea, um, emigrated to Canada, and then emigrated to America. Wow. So in those times, she couldn't really be a mother. Like, literally, she gave birth to me and then went back to work and passed out 
because right. she shouldn't have been at work. Right. Well, my grandmother raised me, and so she never could be a mother, which I felt so sad for her because I think it's one of the most fulfilling. It is for me the most fulfilling job I've ever had. So I feel like I feel really bad for her, um, but also grateful that I could change that for our family. Right. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And she gets to be a great, like, chilled out grandma. Yeah. 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 Tall, you know, and spoiled right. because she, I can see it that she couldn't do that. And she does talk about it. Like, I wish I could have been a mother. Right. But I had to work. There was no, in that generation, there was no choice. She couldn't juggle both. And right. so I'm grateful that times have changed so that I could work and be a mom. Yeah. Because, like, so I know times are changing, but I do feel bad for her. I wish right. she could have yeah. um, been there, you know? Mm, good point. Yeah. I mean, you know, and you kind of uh, mentioning that uh, for both of you, I think of, um, look, it's it's hard, very hard to be a mother. And that's if you have all the structures around you, right? You have a husband, you have a family. You know, big shout out to all the single moms out there who, my God, you know, like, how do you, it's just, uh, and unfortunately, talk about epidemics. That's an epidemic. There's a lot of single motherhood going on worldwide, particularly here in America. And my heart breaks for, yeah, th those women who have to, it, it's hard enough to be a mom with, oh, again, all the support staff around you. But now imagine, right? Like you got nothing now. You're, you're whatever the case may be. So my, my heart goes out to all the single moms out there or mothers who, um, don't have a supporting family or husband, you know, uh, that they're there, but they're not there, you know, like that's, that's tough too. So, okay. Now in closing, uh, I'll start, uh, the other way with Joanne. So Joanne, what is the best thing about being a mom and the most challenging thing about being a mom? Best thing is, it is probably, I say there are two major moments in my life. The first one was meeting my husband and the second was being a mother. And so now I feel full, like everything is full circle. I love both of those things. I love being a wife. I love being a mother. It's the best thing in the world. Um, nothing like making your kid laugh, right? Yeah. It's the best thing. It's right. the best, thing, I think. Um, what was the second part of the question? And what's the most challenging thing about it? The most challenging mom? part is letting your kids be in discomfort, letting them fail and right. not saving them right. when you know because we are all older and wiser and we've all been teenagers or we've all been little kids um and we could clearly help them but the best thing is actually not to help them so i think that's the hardest thing right to be a shepherd not to be a helicopter mom right yeah to just let them fall and cry right right you know Joey, you touch on something. I think this is uh, applicable to all three of us here and many women uh, watching and people watching is that, you know, uh, we all, you know, m many of us come from relative de decent means, right? We're not living in third world countries with raw sewage, uh, you know, right outside our window. Uh, we, we live in, you know, the tri-state area here uh, relatively and all of us are doing relatively well. It's a challenge, right, to right have our kids know a little bit about reality like hey listen man this is not you know you snap your fingers and here comes uh, whatever you want and we could give them that and to your point joanne you know to try to instill humility in them and a little bit of uh a little bit of uh, trials and tribulations we don't want to make them suffer but where do you draw that line right like mom everyone's got a mercedes i want one too like that happens right We're, all three of us are in those towns you know so it's and it's like you know like, you ever see the movie Step Brothers? It, it's a comedy, but it's like, you know, these two boys are so removed from reality. The father's <laughs> like, okay, you know, no more va no more vacation this week. We're not going to the Hamptons, and you gotta, you're not allowed to fly your helicopter. What? This is bullshit! This world sucks! <laughs> like, I, but that's true. I mean, like, the, the boys and girls who live in our areas, and I don't blame, I don't blame them, Joanne. I, I blame the parents. So to your point, the moms and the dads have to set this you know, anyway, so, but, okay, so, Jerry, what about you? What's the best thing about being a, a parent and the most challenging thing? Oh, well, for me, the best thing about being a mom is uh, when they, when they tell you that they love you, or they'll say, or they'll tell me, uh, mommy loves me more than you, and, <laughs> always, and they'll fight with each, not fight, but they'll have yeah, these you know, discussions her. among yeah. each other when they were younger. No, mommy loves me more than you, or yeah. mom. 
And I think that's so great because sometimes, you know, kids growing up, they're always like, oh, mommy loves you more. She hates right. me, you know, right? But I, I love that moment when they when they actually come out with, you know, with right. love. And, and I feel like t- for me, it's just being able to guide them through life and making them make their own decisions and showing them the positives and the negatives of, of a decision, just teaching them. I, I think that's, that's the greatest thing. Um, the most challenging for me is really being, trying to be everything to everyone and um, uh, setting good examples. Like every time, you know, if I say something or I do something and it was, it was, I shouldn't have done it or it was wrong. I feel so bad. I'm like, no, that's really not what I should have done. You know, so I feel so apologetic, you know. Okay. So I think it's trying to set those good examples as a human being is right. to me the most challenging, I feel. But okay. Yeah, yeah you, you know, and I want to touch upon it too. Our, our grandmothers, you know, and Joanne mentioned that going uh, a couple of minutes ago. You know, I, I don't know what I would have done without my nonna, which is Italian for grandmother, or my uh, harmony, my, uh, Korean for grandmother. But uh, yeah, my grandmother like, co-raised me, you know, like my nonna, may she rest in peace. I mean, I, I look back, I'm like, man, all the time and effort and cooking and cleaning and being there for us, you know, like what a blessing I had my grandmother. So and when I say mothers, I'm talking about mothers, by the way, grandmothers too, or you might have had an aunt that raised you or or a somebody in a domestic partnership that was the mother role you know that's very important i think um so you know when i say mother mother's day i'm meaning anyone who 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 fills that seat uh but obviously we've been talking particularly about giving birth which is we have to it's so important but but yeah shout out to the aunts or or people that fill that mother role the grandmothers etc same thing with me my my mom helped me tremendously with my kids right Uh, she still does (laughs) yeah you know and same thing with my mother-in-law i would send my little ones over to her maybe once or twice a week, you know, because they were the babysitters, you know, before daycare, you know, yeah. Um, yeah. No, 100 percent. It's almost like you never stop being a mother. You know, mother's work is never done, you know, and so and my husband, he's he's wonderful. I oh, mean, don't get me wrong. And I know both of your husbands. Right. Uh, again, no. <laughs> dads are great. I know both of your boys, too. Dads are great. God bless the, all the dads out there. But this is a Mother's Day show. So we'll do maybe we'll do a Father's Day show in June. <laughs> but, you know, this is the day. Spotlight on mom. Dad, sit down. We'll get to you. Don't worry about it. But yeah, I mean, you know, so now in closing, and I know I, know, I forgot which, where we're going, but we'll start with Joe. So, Joanne, what advice could you can you give a mom to be on their first born? What, what advice would you give them? Go. Two things. Every mother gets screwed. You don't have the perfect baby. Whether your baby doesn't sleep at night, whether it doesn't eat well, every there's no perfect child. So you're going to get some lottery. Well, God will give you some kind of crappy situation and just know everybody has a crappy situation, right? And it's okay. Right. Don't beat yourself up. But you did nothing wrong. And trust your gut. Like you know more than you realize. And if you just stay, don't let the outsiders convince you otherwise, even your mom or your mother-in-law or your husband, you know what you need to do. I think trusting your gut, you know it. So, right. Okay. It. Okay. And uh, Jerry, what, what, what would say you would advice? Would you? Uh... So um, my advice is there's no instruction booklet that comes with the baby. <laughs> there's no right or wrong answer. My most important advice is, bond with your child when they're infants and when they're young because if you do that you'll understand them more and um you can you can guide them and and then you can go with your gut like joanne said you know and that that was exactly you know what they want and go with your gut feeling because of that bond that you've created with that child so and don't let anyone tell you that you did it right you did it wrong or that you you don't do this or you don't do that. Do what you want to do. You know your child. Right. Listen right. To anyone. Uh, that's right. really. Yeah. All right. S- yeah. Sage advice. And I would also want to say, you know, any mother out there that's watching, I know um, a number of mothers that, you know, they lost their child or children and they're not physically mothers anymore, but you are a mother. You are a mother for eternity. And that never that never ends. So just because, you know, whether their children are moved away, they only see them once every 
20 years or their children have passed away or child has passed away. You are a mother, period. You are always a mother. That never changes. That's for eternity. So, but uh, now, ladies, in closing, is there anything else you wanted to add before we close? Because this has been an amazing uh, interview, and I thank you so much for making the time. Uh, anybody want to add anything else? One last shot. Thank no? you for doing this. Oh, I yeah. love that you're celebrating moms. Yeah. Uh, I don't. I used to work all the time on Mother's Day, and my husband's worked on Mother's Day ever since because he works in a country club, and Mother's Day's on Sunday. Right. So it's nice to be celebrated because yeah. uh, it's great. Okay. Um, enjoy this day now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you'll have a video that you can share forever and ever. It's gonna. We're on YouTube. We got our own channel here. Don't forget to check out Wellness Week. Like and subscribe. Jerry, anything else before we part? No, nope, just to uh, thank you. It yeah, was, yeah. Uh, it was a fun, fun half hour with oh. you. Oh. And Great. ladies, thank you for making the time. Thank you, all the moms out there. We love you. Thank you for all your sacrifice and everything you do. So I'm going to sign us off in five, four, three, two, one. Happy Mother's Day.